Hello everyone and welcome to Festival for Change. My name is Kaisa and I am honored to have here today Mohamed Rayed, who is top uh, who on top of being a blockchain engineer also enjoys designing human-centered interfaces and advocates to make technology and products more accessible. He has experience in product, tech, as well as startup world, but his passion lies in designing decentralized platform independent softwares that adds value to people's lives. He's also co-founder of Green Beans, which was launched last year during Festival for Change. Thank you so much for being here, Mohammed, and we're excited to hear about your story. Uh, thank you so much, Kaisa, for the nice introduction. So uh, let me just share the screen that will just uh, give the audience a pointer to what I will be discussing. Okay, so, so we all are after money and we earn so that we can spend. And we spend money to get our jobs done better at less cost <coughs> while creating uh, more comfort. And the list of getting jobs done uh, keeps growing. So, from the consumer's perspective, customers always look for better products at cheaper cost. That is, the perceived value should be more than the dollar to spend. So, as we all are busy in getting our jobs done, whether having sleep to uh, recharge or breathing air to supply oxygen to our bloodstream, our quality of living standards depends on how well we get our jobs done and how much it costs time, effort, and money. So as innovators, our focus should be to deliver better products that uh, gets the jobs done better and keep improving those products. So, what we see in this picture is a green wrapper, which is environment friendly and in a sense uh, that it is not plastic, but this brings a bit of discomfort, that is a lot of noise when operating, uh, when opening the pack. Perhaps so loud that consumers may choose to buy the unsustainable wrappers, ignoring the, its impact on the environment. And this is an example of an amazing uh, new product made in Bangladesh, a totally biodegradable cellulose-based uh, product that is, uh, of course, better than the existing ones. But uh, at this stage, it is very expensive, at least uh, 20 times the unsustainable plastic bags. And I totally respect the effort and the time the innovator has spent to develop this product, but what I am referring to is the stage of the products. So this product is ready to be launched and it is more durable, eco-friendly, but it is higher than what is available in the market. So will the customers buy this product with 20 times more than what they used to do? And if yes, how big the customer base would be just a group of socially aware people who are willing to spend the extra dollar for the benefit of the environment. So many people across the world succeeded in making things out of curiosity and passion of making, but most of them did not succeed like them. So where is the missing link? So the missing root is this, that the human-centered design perspective. That is, we need to first empathize, that is, research our users. So 
we should gain an empathetic understanding of the problem we are trying to solve, typically through uh, user research. Then we define our user's needs and problems so that it's time to, uh, so that we can uh, analyze our observations and synthesize them uh, at the core, and the core problems are identified and then we are ready to ideate uh, and challenge assumptions and create uh, more ideas. So in the prototyping stage, when we uh, try to uh, create the solutions, this is uh, an experimental phase. So the aim is to identify the best possible solution for each problem found. So our team's focus should be to produce some uh, inexpensive scaled down versions of the product features uh, that is found within our product uh, to investigate the, ide uh, the ideas that we have generated. So the final stage which, uh, in which we try our solutions out, where we rigorously test our prototypes and uh, compile results to uh, check whether our product is ready for launch. So when we miss out any of these points, this leads to uh, some bizarre decision like this to place the port, of, port of, on the bottom of the mouse. And this is done by Apple. And often we are uh, tempted by, uh, tempted by, uh, tempted for creating affordable misleading innovations, often uh, known as frugal innovations. Uh, that is uh, to make existing industrial affordable uh, industrial products affordable to low income people so the basic idea has been to remove certain features or to make some features uh, inferior so the cost of the products uh, gets reduced so in this picture we see tata nano which uh, was a great idea by uh, Rotun Tata. Although his idea was very novel, he wanted to uh, provide a car that everyone could afford, a car that would cost only uh, $2,000. So despite the lower price, Tata Nano failed to reach, uh, to make enough sale for reaching minimum efficient scale. As a result, upon suffering from uh, rupees of 1,000 crores that are discontinued this uh, innovation. So this might not be a big deal for the Tata because it's a huge company and uh, it has also bought uh, Land Rover in uh, recent times. So why did it fail? So it failed because uh, Tata did not do extensive user study and many roads in uh, are filled with potholes during the rainy seasons and it gets very tough to drive a car with uh, such a small wheelbase. And during summer, it gets very hot in, in India that people will choose to uh, move out in that uh, motorbike instead of driving that car without any uh, air conditioners. So feature removal and erosion uh, reduce the perceived value far more than the cost reduction. So customers found a uh, cheaper car and a non-attractive choice. So the craftsmanship spirit. So this is what I uh, call, uh, I mean, uh, the point to relent relentless journey of perfect per uh, perfection. So. This should be our motivations towards uh, innovating new products, innovating uh, perfect products. So Japanese firms start uh, starting from Canon, uh, Toyota, Sony are remarkable success stories. And uh, so how did these companies grow from humble beginning of copying and uh, imitating to the innovation uh, success stories? like? Uh, Toyota, how did it begin? 
On the other hand, how did Sony leverage technologies like transistors and CCD invented uh, in the USA to pursue disruptive innovations, causing destruction to American firms and industries? So, in Japan, uh, it appears that the most important factor uh, is in the Japanese culture, that is the craftsmanship spirit. So some of them keep spending their whole lives in pursuing the endless perfection of whatever they love to make, from toys to LED bulbs and TVs to and uh, cars. So if we look at the journey of this uh, creation and uh, bringing uh, changes into the technology course from CRT televisions to uh, LEDs, then we will understand that how, what is the timeline we would need to build a successful product. So my question to you, to the young change makers, is that are you ready to pursue this long journey of perfection to build a better product at a cheaper cost? And do you have that time, passion, dedication, to start your new venture because every idea, irrespective of its greatness, will emerge at a very primitive, non scalable form. So, anything you invent has to go through a long way of tinkering and uh, perfection. So, this is for you to decide whether you will wait for the government. Uh, to provide better uh, provisions for green entrepreneurs so that people are forced to go green or you will keep improving your product so that people will willingly choose uh, your product because of its uh, higher quality at a local lower cost. So thank you. So that is what I want to discuss with uh, the audience. Oops, I think we dropped Mohammed. He will be for sure back in a moment. Yes. Welcome back. Um, thank you so much for the uh, super interesting um, overview of what you're doing. And yeah, you brought up some really nice points. I was wondering uh, what strategies are you following in Green Beans to make your products and services more affordable? So uh, actually, there are many ways to make a product affordable. Uh, um, it's more like uh, finding new ways to cut costs without uh, cutting corners. So in Green Beans, uh, we are finding uh, new ways to make our uh, own materials. That is, instead of uh, buying from uh, the, uh, buying from the shops or the wholesalers, we make our own products. Uh, or ordering from the software firms, we make our own uh, digital devices, our own USSD services. So that reduces the uh, amount of uh, money that we invest in outsourcing our resources and uh, getting more uh, services. And another way of, uh, of making products affordable is uh, collaborating with uh, other stakeholders because uh, when we collaborate, so we both of both of the companies work for a mutual goal. So this benefits both the companies and uh, reduces the pricing and the mix and leads us to, I mean, better pricing strat strategy. Yeah, no, thank you for the answer. Super interesting. I see we have some questions also in the chat. Um, Dafrik asks, why do you think Tata Nano failed to sustain the market? Well, Tata Nano failed to sustain in the market because uh, it lacked uh, a design sense in a case that, for example, uh, for a car, if we, uh, if we, if you think to build a car in Canada, so the weather is very cold there. So a car without a heating feature uh will be uh, very will not be a very good choice for people to buy right 
and in India the condition is totally opposite. So if the cars do not have air conditioners, built-in air conditioners, so it becomes very hot in the inside. And Tata Nano had the same problem, and it has it had a very low, a very small wheelbase. So in India, the in during rainy seasons, the roads can be a bit. Uh, I mean, uh, roads go bad, and uh, there are many potholes in the road. So when people go, so, so Tata Nano didn't have that ability to move in rural India. So it becomes a loss into the market. Yeah. So that they don't sacrifice some essential key design points to make their product cheaper. Yes. Uh, Henry has a comment. Uh, many would say that our economic system that promotes growth and consumerism is the problem, not the solution. Maybe what's your opinion on that? So consumerism inspired culture. So, so it promotes growth, but uh, does it... Uh, does it impact, uh, does it, what has to do uh, in, with uh, young change makers? I mean, okay, because so I'm seeing a black screen. Oh. Um, yeah, uh, our next question is also from Nicolette. Is there a tension between the products people love and products that sustain or regenerate life on our planet? If so, how can we align these, um, the eco-crisp bags are unaffordable to most needy? Can you see the screen? I'm not yet. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure uh, Mohammed will be with us for a moment. <laughs> it's the across international borders live stream. Yeah, welcome back. Okay. Are you now able to see the screen? Not yet. Um, maybe if I rephrase the question, uh, meanwhile, so uh, I think what Nicolette means is that um, there's the products that people really like, and then on the other hand, there's the products that are really good for the planet. But how can we align these two in a way different perspectives? So we have the products that are not sustainable, maybe, but people buy, and the products that people should buy. Um, how can we maybe align these two? Okay, so to build a successful, uh, sustainable product, uh, we need to uh, look at the unsustainable one's uh, business model because the unsustainable business model, let's say the bottled, uh, bottled uh, beverages. So the business of bottled beverages are, for example, let's say uh, Coca-Cola. Coca-Cola produces bottled uh plastic in a bottles, uh, bottle packages. So their business model is about selling a beverage that is uh, very, I mean, uh, appealing to its customer base. So people, so appealing that people do not care about the packaging. So if we want to want people to buy our own product, so that is, uh, that is we innovate, so the packaging should be uh, eco-friendly. Like, uh, so we that is this is what we decide that our packaging should be eco-friendly. But for the consumers, this uh, this eco-friendly options do not uh, actually works very well. So as a as a young entrepreneurs, we should focus on uh, building uh, sustainable products with an aim to 
make it affordable so that the cost and quality are always uh, maintained so that the cost uh, gets cheaper and the quality becomes a bit higher than the existing ones. Yeah, so it's really in the hands of the business um, owners and the business plan to how they create their products and, and how they price them. Um, another question in the chat is uh, again from Dafik. What are the challenges that one might face while launching a product? Uh, I can't see the screen. Can you please <laughs> repeat the question? Yes, of course. Um, so what are the challenges that we might face when we launch a product? Okay, so there are many challenges that we might face, but uh, I actually ask, uh, I, I have a few checkpoints that uh, I, helps me to identify that, uh, that whether it's a challenge or not. So first is the ideation. So this is the first uh, checkpoint in uh, product development. So so some companies often hit uh, roadblocks when making decisions. So sometimes this uh, obstacles results from a lack of uh, actionable uh, intel on potential product and consumers. Other times uh, the ideation can stall to, due to uh, bureaucracy and uh, disjoint workflows. And the second challenge could be the market viability. So an idea might sound uh, uh, good on paper, but the practical application in the marketplace uh, might lack any financial promise. So as a, uh, as a, uh, as a product innovator, market research will give you uh, information about whether the competition and about the competition and the audience so we should we so that it gives us an option to not create a product because all of our computers competitors are doing the same thing so even if we want to go down to the same route we should focus on uh, new features that is novelties to attract users and uh, the, another challenge should go is uh, the pricing policy. So turning an idea into product is one thing, but putting a price uh, is, a diff is a whole different thing. So if, especially if we uh, want to deploy, uh, develop a pricing strategy for uh, volatile uh, products from the co company side, the most crucial, crucial aspects would be the hiring expenses, the marketing expenses, and also the product realization costs. And uh, apart from this, also the time to market, that is when should we uh, launch our products, our company's ability to uh, meet deadlines and, and uh, our product's market positioning. And and these things will help us to avoid the unforeseen uh, circumstances, circumstances like uh, COVID and also uh, our own organization issues like the hiring delays and also the compliance issues. So yeah, so these were the challenges that one might face. So that is, uh, these are the, at least these are the challenges that I face in my startup. Yeah, I, I hope that answered the question and thank you so much for the thorough answer. Uh, Nicolette again um, asks, what roles can design play in better aligning what people, uh, what with what the planet needs? So um, yeah, maybe to rephrase it a little bit. Um, so what role can design play in aligning what people need and what the planet needs? In the sense so, that, yeah. So design actually can play a uh, great role in uh, aligning what people need because uh, uh, a designer has to uh, read people's mind because uh, people often provide uh, misleading information because uh, 
what people want now, people's uh, choice at, at, at this stage might not be the same when we are uh, in the process of launching a product. So we have to. Uh, this is we have to have that inherent ability to predict uh, the future and uh, look into the uh, I mean long term vision of uh, and the future of the product. So suppose we want to design the uh, design a uh, product, and when companies try to accommodate uh, differences, so. They too often confine themselves to uh, our own environment. That is what's happening in our uh, case. Like if we develop a product for a, a low income community, so we have to go to them and ask uh, what are their problems and follow an ethnographic approach to uh, get uh, ideas from them. and. Uh, and uh, incorporate those uh, feedbacks into our product. So a design uh, that, as I said before, that prototyping testing is one of the most crucial roles before launching of a product. And without design, uh, uh, without uh, design, without the following the design principles, we should uh, not uh, launch any product into the market. So that might lead to. Uh, uh, examples of uh, Tata, Tata Nano, and uh, I mean Apple, Apple Mouse. Yeah, thank you yeah, so much you for, so much for the answer. the answer. I hope it. Uh, it was a good uh, question. A good question. Uh, I was also wondering that the journey of product development is really wrong, long. How hard could it be to get funding? Okay, so it's uh, it is hard to get investors. So the vast majority of businesses uh, I have seen uh, are looking for angel investors. Are uh, uh, angel investors are who are kicking an idea around and without the dedication to follow through. So if you invest money with them, all will be lost. So investors are looking for a business that the founders are uh, fully sufficiently committed to. And that has a realistic uh, business plan. So convincing investors that your business fits into this category is hard. And especially with uh, green businesses where the um, Profit, profit is uh, profit prediction is quite low because of uh, uh, because of uh, making building people's interest on green alternatives, which are usually of uh, not uh, which are usually of lower quality compared to existing products. So the situation is different once you have a viable business and are uh, turning into a profit model. And at that point, you have already uh, demonstrated that you are unlike 90% of other startups, green startups, and so uh, you will generate considerably more interest. So I think getting a bit of uh, traction that, yes, uh, we have uh, sold our products, we have some traction in our hand, uh, helps in getting uh, small funds. Yeah, no, that's really interesting. Thank you so much for the answer. I see we are also nearly running out of time. So I would uh, like to ask you, maybe you can give one final inspirational, uh, maybe quote or a tip or a thought to the aspiring entrepreneurs in the audience that has kind of, yeah, led you through your yeah, own journey. So, so, so I'd, I'd like to say that uh, do what your heart fails uh, to do. So if you have a business idea and you are passionate for about it, then you should go for it. And uh, in the in after some time, you will get to know that whether you should pursue with this or not. And if you find uh, in the later stage that you should not uh, move uh, proceed forward with your idea, then it's completely fine because. Uh, you will be getting new ideas uh, as uh, as you get more experience and uh, 
kind of and be time. Yeah. Thank you so much for this inspirational ending. Uh, thank you also the audience for the questions. And if you're interested more in what Mohammed is doing, go check out Green Beans in LinkedIn. Uh, there you can get more information also on how, how they design more sustainable products. Thank you so much for being here with us and uh, tune in for the next session. Thank you very much.